Tech Yeah Podcast. That was pretty good. All right. Billy, give me some some checks and stuff. Check, check, check. Yo, yo, yo. Dang it. Hello. Such a powerful checker. Very powerful. So I was looking up that Huawei stores were. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a story about a, on a gadget. It's called the Levo 2. It's a weed butter machine. It makes like, you know what weed butter is, right? No. You don't know what weed butter is? Weed butter? Yeah, weed butter. Please tell me it's exactly what I... Th- it's exactly what you think it is. Oh, my God. You use like God. an infuser and you put weed in butter. Then you use the butter to cook. Wow. And that's how you make weed food. That's how like weed candy is made and stuff. Is they <laughs> infuse the weed into like fat and then use that fat <laughs> to cook down. And uh, it's just so, it was so funny. I saw this review on... It's like a weed butter machine. I'm just like, man, this is a this is a different world. Oh my god, what the hell? All right, give me a check again. I think you said I think our levels are good. Check, check. Yeah, you're we're fine. We're fine. Check. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. Can you turn off that stupid massage chair? It's oh, so noisy. Oh, dude, it feels so good on it's my butt. It's so noisy. It feels so good on my butt. You uh, always do this. Yeah, I feel so good. <laughs> you're so gross. You're the grossest person. You're the grossest person. All right, all right. Uh what episode is this now? Oh, 19? Is it 19 or 20? It's one of the two. <laughs> I should know it's that. It's not 18. I should know. It's not 18. We did 18. I think it's I 19. think it's 19. I'm going to find out real fast because I'm got. i going to pull up on Spotify and I can see. All right. We're coming to you live with episode 19 of the Tech Yeah podcast. Not actually live. Pre-recorded. <laughs> and uh, i'm just here. immediately telling lies for yeah. just instantly i'm here with my good friend uh bill we haven't seen you in a while bill how's it going uh it's going better um i'm still feeling pretty pretty sick so i was in minneapolis this past weekend where it was um like the warmest it has been in the last two weeks and it was negative eight fahrenheit negative 22 celsius just brutal the arctic tundra oh my god we left just in time the day after we left it was down to negative 52 negative 52 yeah that's not real it's not real it shouldn't be real well, that's not a real temperature you made that temperature up that's it's like a re- theoretical temperature that's like when they say lava is like nine million degrees it's not but even it's like, you can just say any number yeah you can just say a number that's not a number it's yeah. just like oh it's it's a trillion degrees. Stuff just melts. Okay, that's how hot it is. It's yeah. melting hot. Yeah, so stuff just freezes. It's It was insane. But I came back with a pretty pretty gnarly cold, so I've been kind of fighting that thing a little bit. Um, happy to be back, and hopefully everything will normalize here soon. Yeah, and so that's why we missed last week. Bill had traveling to do for family, and uh, that's why we kicked off the uh, Tech Yet Gaming Podcast. Did you get a chance to listen to it? I did, and I really liked it. Yeah, it was really fun. I had yeah. a, I had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, I really liked it. Um, most of the games I had never heard about before. What? Um, yeah, there were some. I wouldn't say deep cuts, but some real gamer. Yeah, cuts there, in there were some B sides in there that yeah. that you guys seemed to be pretty into that I had never even heard of. So that was kind of funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun doing. It. You know, I will say, like, you know, um, like tech is like our work, but gaming is like my passion. You know. Yeah, like we work yeah. in tech retail, so I have a familiarity with it. I see this stuff all day, but like when I go home and chill and stream, like gaming's what I do, you know. So, so yeah. Um, how was your week? I mean, how I've my been two I've been weeks gone. have been pretty good. I yeah. will say the one thing that I've been dying to bring up that I haven't been able to yet, and I feel like this is this is my this is like my my loudspeaker to tell the world the Spider Man cartoon into the Spider Verse is the best movie one of my the best movies i've ever seen wow it's amazing it's so good I, i'm sure you haven't seen it you'd be correct yeah yeah i'm positive yeah. You haven't seen, i'm positive a lot of people that listen haven't seen it it's so good like the art style is amazing it is so creative and fun to watch and it is so touching and emotional i was ball like not balling but i was I was crying for real for like 25 minutes of that movie. Like, 
tears running down my face, sniffling. Now, is, does it feel like a movie or does it feel like a long cartoon? It feels like a movie. Okay. It definitely feels like a like a if. Well, you know what I mean. You yeah. know, like like the Batman movies, the like the um, Killing Joke. It feels more like a Pixar movie, where it's a you know, like a Pixar movie doesn't feel like a cartoon. It feels like yeah. a feature. Right. Okay. This definitely feels, feels like, like a feature. feature. Yeah. Um, it's well paced. It has a. It does a good job of making it of playing through that whole arc and filling the two hours. Yeah, like Killing Joke feels like. I didn't really like Killing Joke. I know a lot of people were into it. Mm-hmm. Um, I found it hard to watch because it felt like a really long episode of Batman. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's the only reason why I wasn't a... I mean, I, I liked it a lot, but I did. I was aware that it felt like a long cartoon. Yeah, I saw it twice, actually. Really? Yeah, in the past two weeks. Since we've last talked, I saw that movie, Into the Spider-Verse, twice. Wow. And um, I was so... like The first time I saw it, I'd heard it was good, like it'd gotten good reviews, and uh, I had some friends be like, oh, it's really good, you should watch it, but no one was like, you have to go watch it. Then I had another friend, uh, someone I'm really close with, say like, you have to go watch it, it's so good, like hmm. like it's it's important to watch, and, um, and so like that next Saturday, um, two weeks ago after we recorded, um, I went to like a matinee by myself at 11 o'clock, and I was like, yeah, let's go watch it, I got nothing to do, it's, you know, it's Saturday morning. Yeah, well... Um, Literally, like, with a bunch of kids, and I'm just in there just crying with you know, all these kids around. Um, I don't think the kids knew what they were in store for, but uh was just so impressed. I literally, like, came out of the movie and just started texting my friend immediately. Like, like I can't believe how good that was. Like, wow. like, it's, I feel like it's really, it's a landmark as far as animation and animated movies and movies in general and writing very authentic very um very grounded characters that you know i just feel like a lot of these tropes that superhero movies rely on to play to the audience Mm -hmm. it does such a strong job of um of kind of distancing itself from those expectations and um and creating these situations where it's like oh that's believable like that makes sense you know like the the two potential love interests in the in the movie like at the end they don't like kiss and and part ways like they literally just like mutual respect for friends like go you know do what you got to do like it's it's very refreshing to not be like oh here it comes you know what i mean yeah like i remember when i watched rogue one and i know this isn't a movie podcast but i remember when i watched rogue one um you you saw that movie right that was my it's my favorite Star Wars movie. I think it's of pretty, the non three originals. I like the movie, but at the end when they kiss, I was super disappointed because mm. I was just like, these people don't like each other. They don't know each other. You know what I mean? Like, like the whole romance on a battlefield blossoming kind of thing, like, is so dumb. You know what I mean? Like, that's just not how romance is, or how it starts, or how you like fall for somebody. You know? Yeah. And just as the it's great for movies, you know what I mean? But it's not real. Well, it's like speed, you know, like, yeah. uh, what, what's her name? Um, Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Sandy and, B. Yeah. And what's, what's his face? Keanu Reeves. Um, you know what you say? Uh, relationships born out of traumatic experiences never work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's, it's so nice that it kind of uh, abstracts itself from these things and, uh, is written in a way that kind of treats the audience like, like they're not idiots, you know, uh, which is really good. And it's, it's, I just, I could talk about it for the whole show. I will just leave it at it's great. It's important. Um, people should watch it. And if you don't get a chance to watch it in theaters or coming probably to towards the end of its theater run, like it's definitely worth a stream or a DVD or, or you know, however you need to consume it. I would just suggest to giving it a shot. If you're not into, you know, rap music and kind of, um, you know, kind of the vibe of it. Cause it's very kind of street, you know, um, mm. don't let that kind of discourage you. I think if anything, it's more important to see it if that's not your vibe, because I feel like, you know, when you look at comparisons, like this movie is a cartoon though, uh, compared to like black Panther, like black Panther did a lot culturally, I think, but it was so on the nose and awkward and, um, and like, 
apparent and you know what i mean like it was so like you know this movie's about black people and it's great i mean i think it's important to do those things but when you watch the way spider verse did it and how effortless it is and how um tender it is you know like the moms you know the kids uh black and like puerto rican and the moms you know talking to them in spanish and like that stuff like takes me back to like my childhood you know of like my mom like uh you know rambling off spanish phrases when you're running off to play you know what i mean like like um and it none of it seems it doesn't it doesn't seem important until you think about it afterwards and realize mm-hmm. just how important it is to have like a like a like a strong uh mixed race family and it's it's not the it's not the punchline you know what i mean like it just is what it is and and they're a great loving family and a great ethnic community you know what i mean like it all just makes sense and works so well it's great and you're talking it. about spider pig's family right spider pigs yeah. okay yeah. peter porker is yeah, his peter name porker. okay <laughs> and that stuff is silly at the end there's a lot to you know there's a lot to laugh about in that movie too there's you know it doesn't take that stuff too seriously which is great cool yeah loved it that's all right it. i'll watch it okay um so that's that, that that's my extent there i'm not gonna go too far um I think we got to warn people on the show. Is that it for movies? Yeah. That's it for movies. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably talk more about it on the gaming <laughs> podcast if you really care. That came out on two days ago on Friday. So uh, <laughs> if you want to hear me nerd out more, that's the place to go to check it out. And while we're on the subject, uh, if you do want to reach out to us, uh, you can email us techyapodcast at gmail.com. Uh, techyapodcast on Twitter. Uh, if you want to find any of our names or want to look us up, that's where you can find us. Uh, and we also are Tech Yeah Podcast on Facebook, so throw us a like if Sweet. you get a chance. Do we have any emails this week? You don't have any emails this week. Hmm. We, well, we, we will read any and all emails. Yeah, we will read any <laughs> and all emails. We had an off week last week, so uh, you know the fans are a little, I think they're a little discouraged right now. Yeah. I think we let them down. It's true. Well, because we, we did miss a week, and they seem to be two very busy weeks, Yeah, I don't know where to go. Do you know where to go? I mean, like just like w- all the things that happen, like we've You're got to leave. We've got <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, but I need you for a little uh, while longer. right? You know, you got Facebook stuff happening, uh, a bunch of stuff with Apple. You got the FaceTime bug. Oh, that FaceTime bug was a big yeah. one. Yeah, I had, I had the weirdest dream last night. Tell me. So I, that's a place we can go. <laughs> so I had a dream about the podcast and my dream was that. For some reason on the podcast, we were talking about, uh, I, I always going to say his name wrong. I feel like I'm being a racist for doing it. Uh, Marque- Marquise, Marquez Brownlee. Oh, yeah. All right. We were talking about him. Marquez, right? Marquez, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, it's, I don't know. Um, we were talking about him on the podcast and how he's like such a cool dude and he's very athletic and he must like meet a lot of girls and like you know like i don't know why i don't know so why. you were flirting with him with marquez no this was like us on the podcast just talking about oh. how we like his channel and yeah. his content and yeah i don't know that, how much we and that the ladies, touched on his like that the ladies must love him romantic i don't did we talk about that i don't think we did this was <laughs> in the dream this is in the dream Got okay it. that the ladies must love this guy right they probably do let's be honest he's a he's a handsome young man yeah all right um and then randomly, I was at a bookstore, and like I end up sharing an Uber with him, <laughs> right? So and, I don't know if I like where this is going. <laughs> and I don't mention anything, and he's like, he turns to me, and he's like, "Yeah, the ladies are, are really into it." <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" And he's like, "Oh, I heard your show," and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and he's talking to me about it, and I'm like, "Oh, this is blowing my mind." And he's like, we should record something for your show. And I'm like, what? Like, okay. You, know, you just whip out the recorder? I didn't have it on me, right? Um, oh, it was one of those dreams. And then but, your teeth started falling out. Yeah, and then, then I, there were no brakes on the Uber. Yeah. yeah. No, um, no, he was a very nice about it, though. Like, I took the Uber. I got out at his house. And he's like, here, you know, if you want to contact me, he, like, wrote down his information. And uh, that was it. But that, I was like, okay, so your dream, you dreamt about talking about how good Marcus is with the ladies in a podcast. Yeah. And that was kind of our, then you meet stuff. him. Yeah. You find out he listens to the podcast. Yeah. You yeah. share an Uber, you want to collaborate and then you go right to his house and exchange information. 
Yeah, like I, I, I was actually going a different direction, mm. but I just rode the Uber out all the way to his house because it's yeah. worth it at that point. Yeah. You kind of have to, got to have to ride this out and see where it goes. Interesting. I think you got a little uh, MKHB crush there. Well, we didn't make out or anything. Mm. I just. You know, I care about the podcast, <laughs> okay? I care about the show. You're not going to turn it into a smut? No, I care about making the show happen, all right? And if I could get, you know, someone like that on the show, someone that, you know, I respect that makes great content. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I'd talk to him. For sure you'd talk to him. Yeah. Of course you would. How dare you? How dare you disrespect my dreams? <laughs> I'm just concerned at where they inevitably will be going. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't go there. Okay. okay. So just take it easy. It'll cool. be fine. All right. Um, but anyway, yeah. So um, a major FaceTime bug has been uncovered, allowing iPhone users to call another device via FaceTime and hear audio on the other end before the recipient has answered the call. Shady. Dude, I would have loved to have that back in the day. Why? I don't know. Because I would just. I feel like that is something like high school Bill would have gonna creep with yeah it would have been funny because i mean we think we've all done that if we've had a butt dial and someone left that three minute long voicemail Mm -hmm. how much of that you actually listen to or if you like catch the live butt dial yeah and you just listen to the whole you just listen to it it's the same thing forever yeah there's no it's not a creep thing and i guess i mean if it's a bug if you're forcing this in there that's one thing but if it just happens to happen you know you're listening to that for as long as it makes you not creepy yeah, so I can FaceTime Marquez Brownlee and uh, hear yeah. what he has to say. <laughs> is he say, is he saying anything? Is he talking me? about me? Is he talking about Tech Yeah? Is he listening to Tech Yeah right now? <laughs> <laughs> so that that's a big, that's a massive bug. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that that can even exist. Like that, that the, I guess you know because everything's so digital now. Like the, this is a technology to to bridge that connection before it's been accepted. It's, yeah, it's inevitable that yeah. this crap will will sneak through. So. Um, and this was confirmed independently by CNET, uh, and they have the ability to turn any iPhone um, into a hot mic without the user's knowledge, representing uh, obviously a major security concern for Apple. And given the you know what we've talked about previously about Apple and that they're they're losing market share and they're dumping a lot of uh, market valuation, um, this is really not good for them. They're the worst. It's. Everybody's the worst now. I don't everybody, know. Who, everybody is. The I worst don't know now. who isn't the worst, which is kind of weird because, um, you know, Apple. Uh, Tim Cook has said a lot of like really positive things lately about security and going against Facebook and Google and and standing up for it, which is kind of putting himself out on a limb, considering that Apple would probably love to get their hands on a lot of the uh the software that those companies have um yeah they just banned some user data collection app that uh, yeah that facebook uses right yeah that facebook uses it yeah some, uh, like they're some facebook owned third party data collection app yeah. or something they banned from and i, I just like i don't know how like i i like it but stuff like this is going to happen so now they look kind of stupid um, they're, they've got a tough job of s- trying to sell hardware and not doing a really great job at that right now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't love, obviously from, if you've ever listened to the show, you know, I don't love Apple, but I will say the reasons I don't love Apple aren't because I think they're the biggest, uh, privacy violators or, you know what I mean? Like they're, those are the reasons I don't like Google. <laughs> And I don't like Facebook, right? Yeah, it's They're more not, of a, the business practices, like the product that they make doesn't... I don't like the physical product. And I think their make. pricing is um, predatory in a lot of ways. I think they use... Uh, I mean, appropriately so, they found a way to kind of create this cultural pressure to use their devices, and they kind of prey on that pressure to to keep a high MSRP. You know, like... And it's works. And it works, but it's like... I, I think it's kind of kind of shitty when like you know kids in high school now that all have phones like if you're not if you don't have the green check mark where you know viewed from your iphone you know like then you're a poor kid you know what i mean like i don't 
those things are specifically put in place to ostracize people that aren't part of that community, you know? And I think that that's, those are the kind of things I think Apple does that are lame and mean spirited and well, predatory. Yeah. Right? Well, and it's wearing off, which is why they dumped 500 million. Yeah. Of and, their it's, and it's wearing off, but like five, six, seven, um, you know, iPhone five, six, seven was kind of, I think the height of it. And then once the eight came out and they're like, this is the same as the seven. Yeah. Then it was, it kind of started to wane a little bit and it happened to be at the same point where other manufacturers started to catch up hardware wise and, you know, like this, the Samsung uh, Galaxy phones are just awesome. Yeah, but in that same regard, like I do respect their commitment to privacy. You know, I think uh, they've been pretty open about the fact publicly that their public publicly, commitment. Yeah, well, you know, like it's more than most I think are willing to give. For one hundred percent, I just at this point I can't completely put my faith into any of these companies not doing it, even if they say they're not. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I just feel like um, we haven't had these experiences with Apple to know. Like, they're not Facebook, right? Like, we don't. We know Facebook is lying constantly, is collecting data they have no right to. They are, um, you know, they're they're doing the the things we fear. We know Facebook is doing right. It's been proven, and. Uh, we don't know that about Apple, right? And we can't, as much as we want to be skeptical of all technology companies, you know what I mean? Um, we don't have the evidence in place like we do with Google and, and Facebook that, that, that they are violators of this trust. And publicly they have said that they are not violators of this trust. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. in that regard, I say, then I'm still willing to give them the benefit of the doubt, even if I do not like the way they operate their business hardware wise. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I still will edge towards giving them the benefit of the doubt, but ultimately I think it's now you're all guilty and proven innocent. Like a lot of things are nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of contributing to many of the problems. Um, yeah. So that, I mean, it's a big story, but it's kind of a short story. <laughs> yeah, it, it is what it is. It is. Yeah, there's not really too much that I wanted to to go into on that other than, you know, it's just do that's you, bad. Do you, do you use video calls? Um, sometimes I do, yeah. I, I like them in certain cases. For late night calls with the wife? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, see, know. I know what you're saying. I see you. I see you over there. Attaboy. Attaboy, Billy. I like yeah. it. I like it. Hi, Julia. Oh, man. I forgot she listened. <laughs> I was just kidding, Julia. It was a joke. And Maria. Earmuffs. Yeah. Yeah. Mar- Maria likes to, you know, send a a nice message with Dan, you know? They're, yeah. they're a loving couple. I mean, it's, that, it's okay. Let's celebrate it. <laughs> what else you got for me, Billy? All right. So, um, moving on to um, actually more... Uh, this is, this is a deep story and I wanted to, we've talked about it, but this is kind of, it's Huawei. Oh yeah. I got the whole thing. Yeah. So I, my story too. Yeah. And and I know, I know you prepared something. So I actually, if you want to read your, your story, um, first, because we've kind of touched on this a handful of times. I have a very bleak perspective on this story. Uh, I know you do. I, I don't, um, but that's a whole different thing. And this this um, story I'm reading is from Gadget, from Chris Velazco. And his, uh, the story is how screwed is Huawei. Okay. All, All right. right. So this, is, this isn't about what actually happened. I don't know if you guys know what the actually, are you familiar with what the actual issue is? Uh, yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess real quick I'll say, like, um, initially they wanted, so T-Mobile has... And I think it only is just T-Mobile. I think carriers in general have these robots designed to test phones for failure, right? Uh, they test hardware failures and software compatible. Like they're robots that literally just use the phones and uh, do fail checks on them, right? And Huawei wanted a robot, and so they said they were going to. They tried to lease one from T-Mobile. T-Mobile said no. They tried to buy it from T-Mobile. T-Mobile said no. So then they decided they were going to implant employees into T-Mobile uh, stateside and in China and try and uh, 
try and steal the data about this robot. Try and build their own based on insider information they could get through these employees. Uh, that's a big no-no. They lost a class action lawsuit in 2016 regarding this. T-Mobile won like $500 million. It went back and forth. This kind of was case closed for a while uh, until recently when the U.S. was like, nah, we're, we're not cool with that. And a lot of why they said they weren't cool with that was because uh, Huawei through a third-party Huawei company had been selling uh, U.S. devices in Iran, uh, which is sanctioned, right? Like we're not yeah. – U.S. devices aren't allowed in Iran. They can't be sold in Iran. And Huawei was kind of circumventing this to sell these devices in Iran. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of – that's kind of the impetus that got all this like dug up and kind of started – that's when the U.S. is like, okay, we're taking all these cases and just sticking it to to Huawei. Yeah, um, yeah, and that was that story where where the CEO of Huawei was um, arrested in Canada, mm-hmm. extradited to the U.S., and a grand jury, um, actually in Seattle, charged Huawei and the CEO with conspiracy to sell to steal trade secrets. Uh, attempted theft of trade secrets, seven counts of wire fraud, and one count of obstruction of justice for the company's alleged attempts to move potential witnesses back to China. So, and you're right, you know, it it stems from that um, the uh, indictments the the indictment stemmed from the civil suit dating back to 2014, which was in connection to all that T-Mobile stuff, where T-Mobile sued Huawei for stealing the secrets. Um, for yeah. that phone testing device, that tappy thing. Okay, so now we got the base. Here's what the story says. Uh, after years and that of- is a pretty broad overview. I mean, there's yeah. like there's it there's, goes deeper, but that is like the general. There's a lot in there. Timeline. That you can look up all the emails that were sent back and forth. All the stuff is public record now. It was part of a civil lawsuit. So, I mean, there is a lot in there if you really want to dig in. Yeah, um, it's very clear that while it was being very shady in their practices. And they clearly were trying to steal technology. But um, so here's the story. Uh, after years of public mistrust, the U.S. government has finally officially laid out its case against tech giant Huawei. The Chinese company stands accused of a laundry list of crimes ranging from wire fraud to trade secret theft, violating Iran, Iranian sanctions to obstruction of justice. All told, we're looking at 23 charges across two states. Naturally, the company denies all wrongdoing. And now that the U.S. government has made its claims against Huawei, we're left with one, way, one weighty question. Just how screwed is the company exactly? Well, it really depends on your definition of screwed. No matter how hard a stance the U.S. takes against Huawei, it's hard to imagine a scenario in which the second largest smartphone maker goes out of business entirely. Its dominant position in China, make sure of that, uh, not to mention its close ties to the state, make sure of that should U.S. courts ultimately find Huawei guilty of all these charges, the company stands to get slapped with a few fines. And at the very least, but considering just how patently unethical Huawei looks, money isn't the only thing it stands to lose. International trust in the company is eroding already. Um, I'm going to jump through this real fast. Um, so a couple of things in here I thought were interesting is it brings up a couple of other similar lawsuits, right? Uh, this Chinese um, wind energy group called Sinovel was found guilty of trade secret theft and conspiracy of wire fraud against a software company called ASMC, an American software company. Um uh, so that company was forced to pay a $1.5 million fine plus $50 million in restitution to ASMC. Uh, that was to help recoup the $800 million ASMC claimed as a loss. Uh, T-Mobile was going for $500 million uh, from Huawei in their civil suit. Uh, so, you know, as a, as a benchmark, basically, we can see kind of what happened there. Um, now, another case that was similar, and this is all from the same article, um, was ZTE. I don't know if you know the cell phone manufacturer, ZTE. Um, they were also uh, in trouble for breaking the Iranian sanctions. A similar, a similar issue. Um, and they brokered a deal with the U.S. government to pay a $1.2 billion fine. That's billion with a B. Um, so, and uh, the problem with ZTE, or what really stung them was that ZTE phones all used Qualcomm processors, which are American-made, San Diego-born Qualcomm. Gotta love them. Um, And the U.S. government uh, basically barred Qualcomm from providing processors for ZTE after that point. Uh, That didn't really stick. Um, 
they kind of got back to getting the processor after like a year. I don't know, you know, like I think the government was just happy to get their billion dollars and was like, yeah, whatever, you know. But um, but those are the types of um, punitive uh, reactions that I think could really affect the longevity of a company, right? If that Qualcomm thing stuck, if if the U.S. government really wanted to burn ZTE, you know, if they continued that sanction against their their processors, they would not have recovered. You know, they they, they would have been gone. Uh, now, granted, Huawei has a hundred billion dollars a year in revenue, um, losing a billion dollars and some plea bargain with the United States uh, would suck, but it's definitely um, money they can come up with uh you know i think in the the broader scope though it's it's you know it's uh indicative of a lot of distrust between china and the u.s right now uh with things like venezuela um with this phone thing with the trade wars uh looming you know um there's a lot there's a lot of undertone in this uh and i'm sure bill is is sure it's 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 the end times I have Olivia Newton-John playing in my head right now, and instead of physical, I'm let's get political. No, we're not getting <laughs> political. Uh, and, and and you know, I guess that's a warning, right? Like this is a, a very political topic. This is a 100% political topic. So the 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 point of that article was was kind of interesting in looking at it from like a, a tech person perspective, and as someone who wants more competition in you know cell phone hardware market having huawei uh in the market is probably a good thing for everybody because they do you know sell a good product for less money i mean i think huawei is one of the only reasons um apple's finally getting uh like held to a reasonable standard right now yeah right but i also think that those phones are are as good as they are and are as cheap as they are is because they're probably stealing a lot of the um, ingenuity from other companies. Yeah, I think that's a lot of... Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I'll let you finish your thought. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... You have to remember that China... And I love China. I love the Chinese people. I love the culture. I love everything except for the fact that they're a communist country. I have a lot of Chinese friends, <laughs> but... you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it's a communist yeah. regime. Uh, you know, communist dictatorship regime. And it's no different structurally than than Soviet Russia was. Mm -hmm. And to think that... Well, first of all, and all of the information behind all of this is very interesting if you're kind of into geopolitical stuff. But... Um, Chinese companies don't run the same way that the U.S. or Western companies run. Uh, Apple has absolutely nothing to do with the U.S. government except that it sends them tax money. Yeah, The Ch Chinese companies are extensions of the government. And and sometimes it's direct connection. Sometimes it's, you know, it's a little bit fuzzy, but... If you look at some of the board members for these companies, some of the CEOs, the presidents, they're placed there by the government, by the Chinese yeah, government. Yeah, their power is very closely tied yeah. to the to the ruling regime. Yeah, and if if you ignore that fact, you're doing yourself a disservice in 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 pulling the wool over your eyes in a big portion of global economics and a big part of why the U.S. and Chinese trade. You know, it's getting kind of messy because all of those trade agreements happened at a time when China was a third world country. They were poor. They were like begging, like, please give us these breaks. Like, we want to just make stuff and send it to you. So it was very one, you know, and, and the U.S. said, you know, sure, like, we'll help cultivate your economy. And well, that kind of goes to what I was what I was about to get to is that, you know, a lot of and it's not just China. I mean, globally, a lot of these rules put in place for. Uh, how we interacted with foreign countries in trade were like post World War II rules, right? Yeah. The, yeah. the world was in disarray, right? Europe was uh, bombed out for the most part. Um, Axis and ally countries both were in tough spots as far as how to reconstruct, um, how do we generate money there? Um, you know, from Russia to China, the world was in disarray. Yeah, at the time. yeah. I mean, and we 
as the United States, this wasn't a benevolent thing. This was a, we can sell our goods and buy cheap goods globally right now. So we were like, yeah, do whatever. You know what I mean? We were yeah. very lackluster. We'll help you out. We'll help. We'll help you out, right? So we were very, la- very laissez-faire with with how we approached a, a, a trade globally at the time. As Europe kind of got on its feet, uh, formed the EU, um, more strict rules were put in place. Um, you know, patents were 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 being held to standards. You know, like uh, and um, Asia basically was like, nah, like, like they never wanted to get on board, right? They were always just kind of like, we like these old rules. Uh, we're not, you know, and they were they were a, a producer of cheap things at that point. No one really cared until now where they own so much of the world's wealth. We're like, no, you got to like, you got to step up and kind of get with the program. And they're like, no, nah, we're not, we don't have no desire to get with the program. Yeah, it's not fair. And yeah. we haven't had the guts to like really put it to them Mm -hmm. you know for for fear that some of this stuff you know that that we would piss them off and because they're so entrenched hardware wise software wise they have a lot of access to a lot of our stuff true and because all these companies are extensions of the chinese communist government which you know who knows what their in their you know end game intentions are but i can't imagine it's not becoming the number one superpower in the world i mean that it seems to be where they're heading building Everyone, everyone's trying to generate wealth yeah exactly but i think them more than even russia they're trying to be the number one power well i think they're the most capable i think that's yeah. every country would be trying to do what they're doing if they had the capabilities china does right now right you know what i mean yeah, so so that is like the big missing portion of this story. I think is that yeah, we're, we you know this company is called Huawei and it has a CEO and you know she's being indicted under these you know whatever, but it is an extension of the Chinese government. And if you if you're into the automotive industry, you've seen all the Chinese knockoff cars. I mean, there's stuff that looks exactly like a BMW X5. You know, they just stick a different name on it. It's the same design, and they get away with it. And they and that's kind of been a joke. You know, Chinese knock off this, Chinese knock off that. Um, but when you're you're they, when it's a watch or a car that they don't sell that much of, yeah. like no one, really, no one cares. really cares. But when it's starting to take market share from iPhone and from Samsung and from you know all these, you know, global companies that are playing fairly. Um, sort of fairly sort of fairly yeah and it's that's arguable too um then you have you know the director of the fbi saying to the detriment of american ingenuity huawei continues to disregard the laws of the united states in hopes of gaining an unfair economic advantage as the volume of these charges prove the fbi will not tolerate corrupt business that violates the laws that allow u.s companies in the united states to thrive just replace huawei with china and that is basically what the story is to deter to the detriment of American ingenuity, China continually disregards the laws of the United States in hopes of gaining an unfair economic advantage. I think it's a very simple way to think of it. I don't think, I mean, I understand what you're saying and I do, I do tend to agree, but I think, you know, I think it's very fuzzy because like, you know, we pretend like, um, like Chinese companies are exactly the government and American companies are completely divorced from the government. And both of those statements are far more gray. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. American yeah. companies are more and more the um, the ruling class in uh, U.S. in U.S. politics. Right. Yeah. Who's the company that spent the most money uh, lobbying the government? Was it Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> Facebook. Right. Yeah. You know, it's it's um, these more and more U.S. companies are the ones dictating the law. You know more and. So it's it's hard to to divorce these ideas, right? And that's why when you see things like this, like you know, um, these laws are being violated. They they should be held accountable for that. And, you know, I'm going to say something that sounds like I'm not implying that, but I very much am am saying we need to hold China and their government and these people accountable for the laws they're breaking. Um, which you know, th- this is done at the behest of of Apple, right? Like this is done at the behest of a company that has always been the number two company behind Samsung. We have no way to go after Samsung, but Huawei has taken the seat of number two. And now all of a sudden we are dredging up old lawsuits 
You know what I mean? And and uh, and ready to go to war with China over these old lawsuits as our darling Apple has fallen from grace. You know? What yeah, I mean? it's like, it, yeah, it's all interconnected. You're yeah. right. Yeah, like Apple's business practices has reduced their market share. Other manufacturers are making better phones. Uh, you know, the administration is going after China for lopsided. Uh, you know trade agreements it, and it's like and they're just China's fighting back and some of the Chinese response to this is laughable yeah the rhetoric is terrible it's hilarious like they're so they're so it, it's just when you know someone's lying but you just like well what else are they gonna say but it's just so egregious that you just kind of it's like oh my god you know yeah I, I will say like because uh, sometimes like a silly lie says so much more than a believable lie. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just say something ridiculous and it's like, it's kind of a power move. It's, I mean, honestly, it's kind of what Donald Trump does. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. you know, it's negative 40 degrees. Global, global warming's a sham. Yeah. Right. And then a bunch of people are like, yeah. And Donald Trump's like, look at this. Look at what I can do. Yeah. You know, I don't, he doesn't, well, he doesn't believe that. Right. Because he's not the stupidest person, you know what I mean? But I think that the um, the ability to flaunt untruths like that is uh, is a weapon of its own. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's its own um, display of power, you know? It's like China's like, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, what are you going to do? That's what they're saying when yeah. they say these like, we've done nothing wrong. You know what I mean? Well, we have a lawsuit that says you guys have done something right. It's it's a display of like of just brazen. We don't care what you say. Is it going to be backed up by their actions? Are they going to hold this hard stance all the way through? I don't necessarily believe that, but um, <laughs> it's so, it's so ridiculous. Like listen listen to this. So it's undeniable. Now, granted, the U.S. government hasn't put forth any of the evidence publicly yet, um, but. Given everything that we've kind of gone over in, in some of these stories, it it's undeniable that the T Mobile thing is definitely yeah true. that most of this stuff yeah. is dead accurate. So th- this is the Chinese response. This is hilarious. We strongly urge the United States to stop its unreasonable crackdown on Chinese companies, including Huawei. Uh, and this is from um, I'm going to butcher the, their foreign ministry spokesperson. I'm like. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to. Um, immediately withdraw its arrest warrant on Miss Meng, who's the the uh, Huawei CEO, and refrain from making a formal extradition request to avoid walking farther down a wrong path. Like, how outrageous of a response is that for one of their companies clearly spying on global companies? Yeah, and global I mean, companies. It's, it's as simple as like going on AliExpress and Alibaba, the the largest company, one of the largest companies in China. Yeah. Maybe the largest. I don't know. I'm not that familiar. I know that they are gigantic, massive and everything on there is fake. Right. Yeah. It's all propaganda. That's, uh, that's what communist countries do since the beginning of time. It's what governments do. But especially, you know what but, I mean? Yeah, especially yeah. dictatorship, communism, like th- they can only survive yeah. by well, doing it, yeah. that. But, you know, and that's the thing, too. I will say, like, the reason I'm not as like freaked out, like, I don't I don't think this will really turn into what you think it will turn into is because China's far more Western than it's ever been. Right. They have shied more and more away from um, from their communist roots. Right. And uh, are more and more western every year well it's gonna have to come from the the chinese people and it is and it is and um and that's what i mean and these people in china like flat screen tvs they like having iphones you know what i mean they like this lifestyle they do not want to jump off the top of foxconn anymore you know what i mean like like this is a, a new a new country with a new hope and even their politicians like all this new money and you know money talks i don't care if you're a government or a business i don't care who you are like this newfound wealth and this new access is a powerful thing and it's not something they're going to want to give up because you know 
they want to save the president or the CEO of Huawei. You know what I mean? That the the people and the government are would be very willing to throw her under this bus if it means that they can continue the prosperity that they've had over the past few years. Yeah. You know. That and, is that is the like best case scenario, I would say. I think the worst case scenario and it may not even be the worst case scenario, but a lot of um during the the past the the government shutdown um last week or you know for, you know for the last month um a lot of security um experts said that that the the personnel that were deemed to be non-essential um a lot of them most of them were cybersecurity people that just weren't working um you know TSA people still showed up and we've you know kind of consider that to be one of the biggest threats to to us, you know, given 9/11, but the threat of cyber terrorism could be way more widespread, way more devastating and could cripple, I mean, EMPs and bugs and I mean there's all kinds of um, you know, cyber terrorism threats that that could come and a lot of that Cap- a lot of those capabilities come from China, North Korea, Russia, companies that or company companies that Freudian slip, uh countries that would love to knock us down a bunch of pegs. Yeah, I don't you know, it's funny, like I agree. I mean China's a very technologically advanced country, right? Uh they're very smart people. Like I don't know. I I don't there's a lot of, of danger, I think, in in cybersecurity, but it's I, it's these these networks can be made secure, right? Like an EMP is a physical device. That's a bomb. That's no, a yeah, bomb I, uh, bomb. right. I, I know, agree. I know. I know what you're saying, yeah. though. but um, but the reality is, the only reason a go- a country like China has any kind of power over, like you know, hacking or um, uh, breaching secure networks, is because we are we are in the stone age as far as how we secure these networks, uh, both for the government. I mean, look at, look at the election. Right. And I don't really buy into like this Russian hacker narrative, but they're definitely all of these election machines seem to be the easiest thing to hack. Right. Where it's like, you watch the lady on CNN go up to the machine and literally get into the cons. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. like we seem to completely abandon the idea of, even baseline security on um, on very important, you know, very important things in this country. Yeah, and and that's what what the security expert that I was listening to uh, just earlier this week said that just like nine eleven, um, it's going to take an event like that, a cyber event like that, to wake up that we do need that stuff. Yeah, and it's gonna, you know, it's it's. We think it's going to be some scary thing like, you know, they're going to shut down the grid or something. No, what they're going to do is like shut down Equifax, right? And where no one's going to be able to do credit polls and no one's going to have a credit score. Bingo. And people are going to yeah. be like, like, no, I have an approved home loan and like, you can't have this house. We don't know your credit worthiness, right? Like, it, it would send the country into mass hysteria. Yeah, it would be crazy. And I mean, what happened just recently, um, you know, what were the three countries that, that verbally ba- or publicly backed Venezuela? Yeah, of course. I mean, but- Iran, Russia, and China. So those three countries could band together. And those use- Mexican assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we like Mexico. They, they were like, nah, we don't got nothing to say about it. We're a bunch of jerks. <laughs> I'm Mexican, by the way, right? So if you guys got a problem, email me tech at podcast at gmail dot com. No, but but if if the three of them banded together, cyber, you know, cyber attack, shut down any one portion. You're right, like any one portion of our of our however you want to. I mean, there's some like nerdy names I can think of to describe it, but like cybernetic grid, you know, like where you have the financials stuff. You've got even just logistics. And I mean, could, could you imagine if like shipping, you know, the timetables got screwed up? But that's or? what I mean. Most of these things are not like, it's very rare that there's like a, a single breachable data point, you know, where like you're going to shut this whole thing down. Right. That's why I say, like, I think it's going to come from, like, a private company like Equifax, right? Or, like, right, there's other credit unions, right? But there's a lot of companies that depend specifically on this one thing. And that's what's going to, like, 
kick people into like, oh, we need to be secure, right? Like this, because that's what I mean. It's not going to take. Well, hopefully, I mean, hopefully we have enough time to react because that's where I get, that's what it scares me is, is when you have, um, you know, some portion of that, uh, of our grid attacked, just say it's a credit, it's a crediting company and look back at what happened in 2008 when the market crashed there. I mean, that, that was for the most part, a, you know, I mean, it built up, but it was like a day, an event, everyone panics, my credit's crap. I got to pull out all my money. I got to pull out my money. Well, what if my company's hacked? We got to got to sell this. I mean, people, it's just like a domino effect mm-hmm. where everything just gets taken down. Things start getting messy. Then that opens a door for more attacks. Now, like, I understand that this sounds like a complete doomsday scenario. It is. It's some that wacky I'm, like, stuff. My it's, imagine- a, it's some wacky, like, I think hacking's like on TV stuff. Yeah, it's right? it's like conspiracy theory to the max. For sure. I I completely get it. But at the same time, it's possible and the the connection that that we have with uh, with foreign governments through arms of theirs in the form of different companies it, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. It's, it's, these, some of these things are possible, but I mean I, mean, I think the thing that I take umbrage is it's a, it's not going to take some multinational cybersecurity evil axis right like if China, no it takes one it's one dude pissed off group yeah and like like one dude yeah right like um but i'm just saying like if you combine the resources of that's these what companies i mean like you don't need to these com- you don't need to combine their resources like that it's literally like a 300 you know what i mean like it's not this everyone has this idea that it's like no like it's got to be this room with like 600 monitors and like you know, fifty Chinese people in there, and a and a Russian guy running the show, and you know, like, uh, like, and the, that's the whole thing about this, like, even the election thing, right? Everyone's like, it's these Russian hackers, and it's like, not nah, just a bunch of Twitter bots, bro. Like, yeah, it's Russian. It's just trolls on yeah, the internet. It's yeah. Russian origin. I right? do that too. We would do that too. We probably do do that. We probably do do that. I'm gonna buy some ad space on Facebook this week, and you know what I mean. Like, if I paid a Twitter marketing company, it's probably Russian bots. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like that's what it's always yeah. been. Your favorite, you know, when you see a shitty web page that's got like 2 million likes, it's Russian bots. It's Turkish bots. It's, it's third world countries, low income, high tech type countries, like modern poor countries, right? Like you don't get bots coming out of, kind of coming out, of, I don't know, Costa Rica or something, right? Because <laughs> they don't have the internet infrastructure, but Russia has low income high infrastructure so they can you know if you're poor and you're smart like you're setting up botnets and launching them all over the place because you can collect 10 bucks for it and that's a lot of money right like Mm -hmm. um so it's like you know like it's 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 far less um but but that's where too where if you're one of those governments you know that and you have a lot of easily leveraged people at your disposal oh sure that are smart that can do it and that's that's where I'm saying the the big danger is is if you have you have um, government entities leveraging their you know lower class citizens you know lower income not lower class lower lower income citizens that have the the technical abilities to do that, recruit them on their behalf, knock out a couple of our financial institutions and, you know, Hey, guess whose stock market is up and running fine. You know, the China and yeah, Russia, I mean, I mean know. China's got the manpower to DDoS the world, but like, that's the thing. There's technological solutions to these things. There's, there's, you know, Twitch can stop DDoS attacks, right? Like, like very, smaller companies very less important things have found solutions to stop um these types of breaches that are used like you know wikileaks was a phishing email you know what i mean like it wasn't it wasn't a a a, a, you know everyone wants to be like it's some high tech russian hackers that hacked their way in no it's an email that got sent to podesta that's like Oh, I lost my keys. Click this link, right? Like that's literally sure. Yeah, what? Yeah, WikiLeaks was right. right. Like, right. like the the that I guess that's my that my only umbrage is that these attacks are very low tech. 
They, you know and I, they always will be low tech, but it's like but we, some we have rules to stop these things from happening. It's yeah, that people don't follow the rules. And and that was my point is that if you don't recognize that these threats are out there, then you'll you'll let your guard down individually and you know as a country as a society. Like if we're not recognizing that. This Huawei story is a big deal, not because a foreign company is stealing trade secrets, but it's because a foreign government is trying to tra- steal trade secrets. And if we're not careful, you know, and even like the the social engineering hacking, whatever they call that. What's that called when you're like looking over your shoulder and... Oh, um, it's not social. It's a... Uh, what do they call it? I don't remember. It's Email that, us at Tech, yeah. That whole Kevin Mitnick thing where like, you know, like all hacking starts at a... Like at a person, not at a computer. Yeah, like, you know. you're like looking over someone's shoulder, yeah. and you see their their password being put in, or so, like there's the post it on their desk or whatever. Yeah, right? there's some. There's a word for it. There is a word for it, and I can't remember. Yeah. It's like gray hacking or some stupid nonsensical term for it. But yeah, man, that I call is it grandma hacking. <laughs> that is as low tech as you can get. Someone literally looking over your shoulder in the subway, you know, watching you put in your password. Um, and there's, I mean, like, how do you protect against that? You, you know, it's really hard to, it's not a guy in a warehouse going in hands and hands and hands. It's that kind of stuff. It's the, you know, the, the Nigerian prince, I have a million dollars for you email. How many people can we get to fall for that? Yeah. It's Dimitri in the library and it's really cold. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, there's, yeah, there's very low tech ways to do that, but it does require manpower and a focused effort. And if you've got governments aligned with what they want to do, they can more easily align the resources they have to pull off some of this stuff. Yeah, and you know, I think the the big thing is it's really it's posturing on it's too it's governments posturing through these technolo- technological like um like issues, right? It's it's uh both the US government and the Chinese government and in some ways the Russian government, you know, with all those Venezuela stuff kind of tying it all together. Um, it's these it's these powers that are posturing against each other using these lawsuits and these um, tech companies kind of as their as their proxies. Just like Venezuela was a proxy, Huawei is a proxy, uh, and the court will then be a proxy for this kind of trade war that that's kind of moving forward. I think we got got in the weeds on hacking there for a little this bit. This is a this has been a dark episode. Next week on Tech Yeah Podcast, top five wearables and what video game should your eight year old play to help him out in school? Yeah, I mean it hasn't been that dark. It's fine. It's you know, I mean you're just you're very doom and gloom about it. I think these things um are worked out by the fact that everyone still wants to be rich, right? The the people in power in China and the people in power in the United States all want to maintain their wealth and unless it's in their best interest of being wealthy to uh to push this thing farther and farther um we're still china's top consumer china still enjoys selling us things right china likes having us around to buy all their stuff Mm -hmm. and uh if they if they crashed our economy they could not do we would not be able to do that yeah which is why i think they're taking this very cautiously yeah they're using companies that are you know that's, that's what i mean everyone's gonna baby step everyone's gonna keep poking yeah. back and forth this yeah. is not the this is not the last story of this that definitely we're not no other companies will get dinged for yeah. this and um and uh, it'll be interesting to watch moving forward i do think that we're far away from um from you know i don't know what's uh I'm trying to think of like a spy movie. Or, yeah, I just you know? yeah, I don't see, I don't see this like turning up like you know Die Hard Four, like, you know, or something. I feel like there's a Pierce Brosnan James Bond movie that's this. Yeah, I'm just not sure which one. It is. I don't the know. world is not enough. Is so this? One of those. Yeah. yeah, like there's not like we're not leading up to an event. It's just like all the stuff can add up to maybe going down a bad direction. Maybe at some point. I think it's a potential. I honestly don't think that is going to happen, but I think ignoring the potential of it is a mistake. I will say this real talk. I know a lot of people from China. I love them. I think they're good people. I know a lot of people from Russia. I love them. I think they're good people. Um, I think the real sucky part in all this is that we're we're made enemies by our governments yep. when the reality is I think we're all pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think that yep. I think that's the the main thing to remember for all of us is that we're all people trying to do our best and uh and we we can't we can't allow these kinds of things to um 
to create these uh, these kind of unfaced enemies yeah. out of the world. Yeah, right? just be aware about it and yeah. just you know be aware, be willing to discuss it. You know what I mean? I think that's I think a big thing about it is people are so quick to like they don't want to talk about this kind of stuff or it's like yeah. you know oh, I yeah. can't talk about Huawei like my Chinese friends here. It's like they don't you know what I mean? Like be willing to be open about it, talk yeah. about it, and just yeah. um just treat people with love. I think as you do, and I think it's going to show and. And uh, and we'll all be stronger for it. Yeah, as willing as we are to dick on our own government and not make it a reflection of everyone in the country, we should be able to dick on other governments and not have it be a reflection of our thoughts on the people of that country. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, we all don't want to be judged by our government. So yep. uh, we need to make sure that we don't judge others by their government and the shitty things they do either. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. I think that's a good thing to close on. It's a, a hopeful message of... Of love and community. Yeah. Next week is going to be all airplane stuff. No, it has been, I haven't said a single word about airplanes. You just I did. have so much airplane you stuff to talk about. It. I'm happy it's raining so you can't fly. <laughs> I know. I, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you guys for, for tuning in. We appreciate having you here. And uh, we love you guys. Yeah. Love you too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.